I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeYourself.com Reviews, and in today's video, I'll be attempting to not die once again, and giving you my opinions of the InMotion V12 HT electric unicycle. Hands up, I'm still not even remotely gonna call myself an EUC rider. And if you want insight into the V12 HT from a pro perspective, this is not the place for it. I am still very much a beginner in every sense, but I do increasingly find myself taking out the EUC when we go for a bit of a leisure trail ride rather than specifically testing a new e-bike or scooter. It's my first choice, basically. First up, some numbers and specs. The V12 HT is equipped with a total of 1.75 kilowatt hours of battery capacity spread across two batteries, which is why it weighs so much at around 30 kilograms or 65 pounds, along with 2,800 watts worth of motors to keep you balanced. And you can go at an eye-watering maximum speed of 36 miles an hour. To be clear, I will not be putting that to the test. I do not wish to die. InMotion also claims it can pull you up 45 degree inclines and can do 96 miles of range or 154 kilometers, which sounds pretty insane. In reality, I'm gonna get a lot less than that because I, I weigh quite a lot. Unlike the V12 HT that I tested last from InMotion, there is no suspension, which in my opinion makes this a lot easier to ride. But of course, if you're doing a lot of heavy jumps, this won't be the one for you. That said, the three inch uh, off-road tire is still quite capable of handling reasonably rough terrain, uh, just nothing too bumpy. As for other built-in features, you'll find a Bluetooth speaker, not kidding, and an RGB light ring. Seriously, but perhaps more helpfully is the full LCD touchscreen that you'll find on the top. This makes it super easy to change the various modes and most usefully, you can put it into transport mode without needing to open up the app. Basically everything you needed the app for on the V11 can now be done from this little screen up here. And this is the single biggest quality of life improvement, I think, especially if you're regularly going trail riding, you need to put it in the back of the car and transport it. It could be awkward to have to use the app to do that. One other feature I really like it's a little bit gimmicky, but it's called Soundwave, and it adds a subtle engine noise, most noticeably uh, when you're accelerating. It's not loud at all, you're not going to annoy anyone around you, uh, but it's audible enough to give you a little subtle feedback, and basically sounds as if there was a tiny petrol engine in there. I suspect you'll either love or hate this feature, but it's easy to disable too, so don't worry if you find it annoying. Other cool design features you'll find here are the handle, which you can unclip while the motor is running, and then that helps you to wheel it around a lot easier. You'll also find a spin kill button uh, under this main handle here if you need to lift it upstairs or similar. Finally, around by the charging port is a USB-A and USB-C, so if you find yourself getting caught uh, short out and about when your phone runs out of juice, uh, you can use the massive battery in there here to recharge, and realistically, it's not gonna make a dent at all uh, on your range, it's such a huge battery. On the design front, other than the ring of RGB LEDs I mentioned, there's a front light and rear strip lights, which are perfectly visible. You also have a large area of padding here at the top, and the pedals can actually be adjusted to three different heights if required. This allows for much deeper turns. Now it's not something I can show you, but I've seen videos of people with this going up to 45 degree angle, uh, with the motor still engaged, and it's terrifying. But that's designed to accommodate either sort of faster street riding on the lowest setting, or off-road on the highest setting where you need extra clearance. So my initial impressions of the V12 HT were very positive. Unlike the V11, you don't need to do any complex setup for the suspension here. You can jump right on straight away after checking the tire pressure. You will also need to add it to the app for the initial setup and upgrade the firmware. And of course, you'll need to fully charge it. But that's a simple enough step, and within five minutes, I was off. Compared to the V11, the V12 HD is a little thicker overall, and this includes some nice soft padding. So from the get-go, this means that it's a lot easier to grab the V12 HT with your calf muscles, and therefore feels more stable. Indeed, that's what I found. Riding this for the first time felt so much easier. And even now, if I swap between the V11 and the V12 HT, it just feels so much more stable without much effort from me. The tire isn't larger. If anything, it's a little slimmer, three inches wide by 16 inches diameter. So it's not that. And I can only assume it must be due to the lack of 
massive suspension that the V11 had and the overall wider body of this. I needed a lot more balancing on the V11 and that's not just because it was my first EUC, it's also because it was overall slimmer with a very dynamic suspension system. I also find the V12 HT to be a lot smoother at very low speeds and that's probably down to the higher torque. I can easily crawl along on this without too much trouble and anyone who's ridden a bike or EUC will know how hard slow riding can actually be. It's not difficult to ride fast. So how does it ride? On relatively smooth terrain, the V12 HT handles like a dream. Whether that's concrete, tarmac, sandy paths or slightly off-road, the V12 HT feels so powerful and so smooth. I tested it over various inclines, hills that would challenge bike riders, a series of whoops as well, and it had no problems at all pulling me up them with little effort on my part and keeping good balance as it went up or down. As for 45 degree angle claims, I think you'd need at the very least some extra pads to do that. InMotion sells them as power pads and they stick on the side and basically give you extra grip to put your legs inside of. They're essential for jumping too, so you don't actually lose the unicycle and come flying off. So I don't think extreme hill climbing is feasible with my weight. I did try closer to 35 degrees just outside my house and it just wasn't happening for me. But that could also be my inexperience. I couldn't lean far enough into the hillside before losing my balance. Again though, I feel like it might be technically capable of very steep hill climbs if you're skilled enough to pull it off and have those pads, but I'm not there yet. So I don't want to comment more on whether that's possible or not other than to say that over the course of normal trails, things designed to challenge bike riders and really work up a sweat for them had no issues at all. Maintained a good speed up the whole way, kept me balanced, all good. However, then I went up to try some more advanced off-road trails, much rougher surfaces with lots of smaller rocks, and they really proved challenging. I didn't fall off, but I could really feel the lack of suspension compared to the V11 there, and it was definitely a struggle to stay on. Every small stone seemed to make the V12 HT wobble a little. You can sort of see it in the video I'm playing now. So while the V12 HT can handle brilliantly off-road, in the sense that the inclines and slow speeds are no problem, you're not going to veer too far off the beaten path. Stick to light gravel, compacted sand, don't try to jump with this, uh, and you should be fine. So is the V12 HT suitable for a beginner? When I originally reviewed the V11, I said it wasn't suitable for a beginner because of the high power and, well, high cost, frankly. But there were some comments on that review from a viewer called Mikhail, uh, which actually made me think again. And I quote, less powerful EUCs of a thousand watts or less uh, are more dangerous because they have no safety margins. If you ride at the top speed of one, uh, 25 to 30 kilometers on flat ground, and then you try to go up a hill, you will crash. So a recommendation from another EUC rider is to not consider low power wheels and go straight to 2.5, 3.5 kilowatt wheels like the V11 here. Another thing to consider while comparing it to e-bikes and e-scooters is that EUCs only need 500 to 1000 watts to move forwards, but another 2000 watts to keep it safely upright in all circumstances. This alone is problematic with local e-ride laws because the wattage is often directly mentioned without any consideration to how it's actually utilized or required. So thanks to Mikhail for pointing that out. This is a massive sort of law of physics consideration that I hadn't thought about and why the motor size comparison is nonsense. Basically in the UK, for instance, legally e-bikes can't be more than 250 watt, but otherwise they become a full on motorcycle, which for something with pedals is you know, okay on flat terrain but this is at least 10 times as powerful as that. And it needs to be because you have no added power yourself. And the other point being that while standing forward motion isn't that hard, it doesn't need much power to balance you. The more the effect of gravity is gonna act on your body when you go up or downhill, the more motor you need, the more power you need to counteract that and to keep you balanced. So more powerful EUCs are counterintuitively actually safer. That said, I will stand by what I said before in that the suspension on the V11 isn't really beginner friendly. Even if I appreciate it more now when going fairly off-road, uh, especially compared to the V12 HT, the V11 still isn't beginner friendly in that regard and the V12 HT is actually more beginner friendly than the V11. And it too costs a lot of money. So should you buy the V12 HT? 
for commuting, basic trail riding, sandy tracks, that sort of thing. Uh, plenty of up and down, relatively steep hills. The V12 HD does ride like a dream. It definitely has the power and the torque to take you anywhere, say, an e-bike could go. However, I wouldn't recommend it for very rough off-road riding. Without any kind of suspension, it can get quite unstable. Although they can be pricier than a decent e-bike, the benefits of an EUC are plentiful. You can still use your hands to carry stuff while you're riding it. You can fit it inside a car much easier, even in the front seat if you need to. And you don't need to lock it up at the other end. You can simply roll it around with you wherever you go. Anyway, that's it from me today. Hit like if this has helped you to decide if the InMotion V12 HT is for you, or drop a comment down there detailing exactly how I am completely wrong about everything. Otherwise, until next time.